8.6 is on DeMoss theorem and going to be in root theorem as well. They start off with the mobs, and, and I like the compact version. I think it's a lot easier to read. Um, the Moss theorem is going to say r to the nth cis n times theta. So if you had something like this, if you had like uh, know, 3 cis 20 degrees to the fourth power, this is going to be a Moss question. You take 3 to the fourth cis 4 times 20, which I imagine both most of you can do in your head. Okay, 3 to the fourth is 81, and 4 times 20 is 80. So that's a, that's a typical DeMoss problem. Real quick, as long as we're in polar form, the difficulty is going to be if we're not in polar form. So let's look at example one. Find one plus i squared of three to the eighth power. So here you see rectangular form. You've got an x and a y number. And so what they want you to do is to expand this, basically. Okay? Now, if this was algebra one class, you could foil this out, I guess, but I really don't want to do that eight times. That's going to be a monster of a problem, all right? You are equipped to do that, but it's going to take up a whole piece of paper, okay? So how I'm going to get around that is I'm not going to use rectangular form. I'm going to change it to polar form and do Demos theorem. Okay, Demos only works in polar form. So what I want to do is change this to polar. Remember polar, we're going to need a magnitude and a direction. So let's, let's change that into polar form. R, or our magnitude, is going to be 1 squared plus square root of 3 squared. Square root of that. So square root of 1 plus 3, that's going to be square root of 4, which is 2. So we have a magnitude of 2. A magnitude of 2. And we want the direction angle, tangent theta equals y over x. So tangent theta equals square root of 3. And so we can look at our chart. You're going to tell me what that, what that reference angle would be? 60 degrees. Okay, good. 60 degrees. That's a 60 degree reference where tangent is positive. So we know tangent is positive in the first and third. But we have to figure out where this is, but we know where this is, okay? Because x was positive and y was positive. So if you have a positive x and y, what quadrant are we in? That's the first quadrant, okay? We are definitely in quadrant 1, and so then theta would have to equal 60 degrees. Okay. So all we've done is we've taken this complex number in rectangular form and changed it to a complex number in polar form. 2 cis 60. So what we want to do is we want to take that to the 8th power, and that's what Demos is going to do. Okay? Demos says we're going to take 2 to the 8th power, and we're going to take 8 times 60. 2 to the 8th power. Mm -hmm. 2 to the 8th power. 256. 256, and what was it? 8 times 60 is 480, right? Two fifty six cis 480, okay? That is the answer. That's the answer. 256 cis 480 is the answer, except they want my result in rectangular form, which means they want and x and y. So we're going to have to do another conversion. The conversion is the hard part. Okay? The new lesson, the Demov's theorem, that was the easy part. Demov's theorem was right here. It's easy. Now we have to convert, which means we need to go back to our, our I mean x and y. So how do we get x? x is going to be 256 cosine 480 degrees. And y is going to be 256 sine 480 degrees. Okay? So, let's look at where 480 is. 480. Oops. 480 goes all the way around past 360 and then 120 more. Okay? So basically it's like 120. Okay? 
Okay, it's putting us in the second quadrant. It's a 60 degree reference angle. Very good. Okay, so we want to treat this kind of like cosine 60 or sine 60, except don't forget where we are. Second quadrant. Cosine 60, cosine 60 is one half, right? Cosine 60 is one half. So what's cosine 480? Negative one half. Why is that negative? Yeah, it's like a 60, but it's in the second quadrant. Cosine 480 is negative one half. And so x is going to be 256 times negative one half, which is negative 128. That's the x coordinate. Okay? So let's look at 256 sine 480. Okay? Sine 480 is going to be like a sine 60 in the second quadrant. Okay? So sine 60, straight from the chart, sine 60 is square root of 3 over 2. But sine 480 is upstairs, so it's still going to be positive, right? What's sine 480? Also square root of 3 over 2. It's the same thing as the sine 60. And so we're going to have 256 times the square root of 3 over 2, which is going to be 128 times the square root of 3. Okay? Put it together, that's going to be our answer. Okay? Our answer in rectangular form, negative 128, that's the x part, plus i times 128 square root of 3. I think it's kind of a tough question just because of the conversions. You have to use the chart, you have to be able to uh, find your reference angle and, and all that, what and where, that kind of thing. But just, you know, think about the new material and how easy that new material was. That's the Mott's theorem right there. Okay? Hard parts of the conversion. But there we go.